Hello and welcome back to AV14. Today I'm going to be showing you how I set up my glider, the Hobby King Night Walrus, with the Radio Master TX16S. And getting right into it, we hold down that center scroll wheel and hit the model select page. Hold that down again and we select create model. That'll bring us to this model setup page. And even though I'm setting up a model uh, glider, I did select uh, set up airplane. Now here it'll ask you, you know, what is on what channel. So what channel is your motor on or throttle? What channel are your ailerons on? And what channel are your elevators? And do you have flaps or do you not have flaps? And to make this process a lot easier, I actually use this little cheat sheet here. And so when I'm plugging in all my servo wires into the receiver, um, I write down what channel is what servo or what control surface. And that makes this process a lot quicker. Additionally, with this model, I have every single control surface on its own channel. So there are two channels for flaps and two channels for ailerons. That will give us much more programmability in the uh, actual transmitter itself. And will give us some cool flying characteristics that we can work with. You can see here we are setting up the tail section of the airplane with the elevator and rudder control surfaces. And one thing I don't like about the setup page is that the font is actually white unless if you're highlighted on the control surface, which makes it a bit confusing, but just take some playing around with. Alrighty, and once we are done creating our model, it will ask if we want to make any changes and we can just select no, we are all good to go. Let's create this model and let's get this aircraft set up now that we have our model created we want to actually bind the airplane and the transmitter together and to do that we have to turn on our internal RF which is internal radio frequency and it's a multi module so we just go to multi and then DSM because I'm using an orange RX and for this particular receiver it's DSMX at 11 milliseconds and as you saw there, it gives us a warning. And so each receiver that is on a certain protocol needs to have its own number. Otherwise, as you see here, it'll interfere with another receiver. So you need to have it on its own number and you'll be all good to go. Next, we click the bind button. And as you can see, our receiver is out of bind mode and we give it a few seconds. And we have connection to the aircraft. Of course, as you can see here, the ailerons are tied together, going the same direction, but that is something we will fix down the road. First thing I do with all of my models before I mess with any sort of mixes or any sort of uh, reversing channels is I go to my special functions page and create a throttle cut. This is very important when you are first setting up your model and even when you're on the field. So I always select that open space. I scroll and then I assign it to that two position switch. You want to make sure that the function is override and channel three is our throttle channel. So we are going to move that channel to channel three. And then here for our value, we are going to select negative 100. And that is going to ensure that that throttle will not move while we have this switch. And then you want to also activate it by highlighting this little box here. All right, once we got that done, you can see our rudder is actually going the wrong direction. So head over to our mixes page and we can see rudders on channel four, which doesn't really matter because it's actually labeled in the transmitter anyway. But if we look over at channel four rudder, there it is. We have to click it, hit edit, and then we go down to weight and then go negative 100. And what that'll do is that'll reverse the channel altogether and it'll also reverse your trims as well so your trims correspond to the way your stick is moving which is very important now with the weight adjusted we can now move the rudder stick back and forth and see that the rudder is now moving in the correct direction if you remember from earlier our ailerons are still moving in the same directions which means that one of the ailerons is going in the wrong direction and they are on separate channels so we can get some advanced mixes now normally the right aileron should be going up when we move the stick to the right however that is not what is happening so we're going to have to go back into our mixes page and again edit the right aileron 
which is our first aileron here, and go to negative 100 to reverse that channel. And after that quick fix, we can see right stick is right aileron up, left aileron down, and vice versa. They're moving the opposite direction, which is exactly what we want here. And now we are going to set up our flaps, which if you remember, we have two different channels for flaps. So we're going to go to channel 7, which is our second flap. And I named this flap 2 for short, and I just skipped ahead there. So we don't have to watch me scroll through all the letters and so once we got that named we're going to go down to the source and I like using the flip or the s switch above the right stick for my flaps so once we uh, flip that a couple of times it'll pop up in our source box and that is exactly what we want so now when we hit that switch there you can see it moving however it is not going in the correct direction so simply have to give it a negative 100 weight and that'll correspond to the switch in the way that we want it to. So in the up position, the flaps are up. And in the down position, the flaps are fully extend. And by default, if you go in the middle, the flaps will be, uh, you know, 50%, which I usually keep it that way. However, if you don't want that, you can adjust some curves. And that will give you the right amount of uh, flaps that you want. And back on our mixes page, we're going to select channel 6, which is our other flap, which is on the left wing. And again, I'm going to rename this to flap 1. And just like the first flap, we are going to highlight our source and uh, flip that switch. And that'll make sure that that flap is moving when you move that switch. So here we are again. Now both of the flaps are activated on the switch, which is a good thing. But we're going to go back into that weight and reverse the channel so then our flaps are moving in the correct direction. Now you may have noticed that on my model here, the flaps aren't perfectly flush with the wing in the up position. Uh, and that is because I had to install the control horns and rods by myself. But that is actually a pretty easy fix in the Radio Master software. We just have to go to mixes and click edit. And then we are actually going to scroll down to and highlight the offset and we are going to scroll through until we find a percent number that works for us and that'll make our flaps perfectly flush with the rest of the wing and we want to do this to ensure that we don't have any wonky aerodynamic effects because at that point they are kind of acting like spoilers and that'll kind of deteriorate some of the energies that we have built up in flight which we do not want so it's uh, just safe to you know, take a couple of seconds and center up those flaps on the wing. And finally, you can see here we return out of the mixes page and we give our control surfaces a test and everything is working the way that we want it to so far, which is great. So we have the basic setup of ailerons, flaps, elevator rudder, you know, channel reverses. We, we programmed our throttle cutoff and that is how I set up my basic models. And in the next video, I'm going to be going over how to program advanced mixes such as flapperons, spoilerons, and uh, your flaps moving with the ailerons for better maneuverability in the air. Anyways, that is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you for tuning in to AV14, and I'll catch you in the next one.